Hey friends, it's Jess and Jericho. And last week we talked about different phosphates, aka flavor enhancer palatins that are in pet foods. And the review states, phosphates, pyrophosphates, and polyphosphates have also been explored as potential palatins in dry pet foods. Although there are some concerns regarding their long-term effects on renal functions of pets. And we looked at three different brands, all of which are vet recommended. They also all have prescription foods. And all three of them had some form of phosphates, flavor enhancer palatins added to them. So today we're going to look at the other study that this review references in regard to its effect on renal functions. The study is called Effects of Long-Term Feeding of Diets Enriched with Inorganic Phosphorus, aka phosphate, on the adult feline kidney and phosphorus metabolism. So they reference in this study that organic phosphorus, aka from meat, is less bioavailable when compared to the inorganic version, aka the synthetic man-made phosphate. And this is important to understand. So when the cat is eating his whole prey, he's getting phosphorus naturally, and it it's easy to avoid over excess. Whereas with the inorganic phosphate, it's easy to overdo because it's more bioavailable. And especially when this comes to dry food, these companies have one parent company at the top and they manufacture multiple brands, multiple products within each brand. So it can be difficult to have quality control when you're manufacturing 20 different products all in the same factory. And the study states... Data from rats fed high phosphate diets supplemented with monophosphate or polyphosphate salts has indicated that the development of nephrocalcinosis and diminished kidney function is more severe when polyphosphate salts as compared with monophosphate salts are fed. And polyphosphates were in all three of these vet recommended dry foods that we looked at last week. And the study continues, in cats, they compared a diet with 100% phosphorus from an organic source with a diet containing a similar total phosphorus, but they used 63.5% phosphorus from sodium phosphate. So they had natural phosphorus from an organic source and they compared it to an inorganic phosphate, but it, the levels of the phosphorus were the same. A greater percentage of phosphorus in the urine when the high inorganic phosphate diet was fed compared with the organic phosphorus diet. And especially with kidney disease, we're told that phosphorus is the enemy, but that's not the entire truth. It's the inorganic, aka the man-made synthetic phosphate that causes problems and not the organic, aka from meat natural phosphorus. And it's very interesting that this study was actually funded by Mars Pet Care, and they are the manufacturer of one of these vet recommended brands that we looked at last week that includes the polyphosphate. So they know that it's a problem, but they still use it in their food. Very, very interesting. And I guess the better word is disturbing for that. Now, if I was feeding one of these brands, I would switch my cat to wet or raw right away. And I'll link my transition plan in the description below. Next, I want to talk about grain-free cat food. Is it good? Is it bad? I'm sure you've heard a lot of misinformation and con conflicting arguments about this. So first, let's clarify. Cats do not need grains in their diets but they also don't need carbs. So it's important to understand that grain-free does not mean carb-free. There are many plant-based ingredients that still have a lot of carbs in them. And since manufacturers can't use grains in their products, they're going to use potatoes, legumes, lentils, and things like that to, number one, bump up the protein content because most dry food is low in meat-based protein, let's be honest. And number two, that's, those starchy ingredients are required in dry food because that's what holds that kibble shape together. This is from Dr. Karen Becker. Grain-free, low-protein commercial diets are very high in carbohydrates, which displace amino acids. Amino acids come from meat, specifically taurine, which is not found in plants, is essential for the cat's health, and it directly affects the heart health. They also contain anti-nutrients, 
for example, saponins and phytates and lectins, that it may interfere with taurine absorption. When you add in the high heat processing used to manufacture kibble, it's hardly surprising these diets aren't as adequate source for taurine for many dogs. Now, this article is about dogs, but the same applies to cats. Dogs can actually synthesize taurine on their own through other protein amino acids, but cats can't do that. So it's very essential for the taurine to be in the diet. And the most natural source, the only source of taurine is from meat. Even eggs don't provide taurine, so it's really important. That's why cats are carnivores, because they require taurine in their diet. Saponins include peas, chickpeas, beans, and lentils. And lectins also include lentils, peas, soybeans, potatoes, and chickpeas. So let's take a look at some grain-free cat food labels and see if we can spot these anti-nutrients, aka nutrients that prevent the absorption of taurine, which is essential for the heart, and dilated car cardiomyopathy is a disease of the heart. So again, I'm changing the names here and I'm um, Hopefully you can guess which one is which. So the first one that we'll look at is called a tros, and that's short for trosity. When we look at the ingredients, we see that there are peas, lentils, and chickpeas, and the approximate carb amount is about 36% on a dry matter basis. So here we have these anti-nutrients and a very high amount of carbohydrates. The cat's natural diet is about 8% carbs on a dry matter basis if you use the guaranteed analysis of a mouse. So 36%, that's four times higher, more than four times higher what a cat would eat naturally in his, in his habitat. Next, we'll take a look at whole starches. And this ingredients list has peas, chickpeas, and pea flour. And the approximate carbs on a dry matter basis is 43%. So again, we have these anti-nutrients and lots of carbs. The next one that we'll look at is called careless. And in the ingredients, we see peas, potatoes, chickpeas, and pea fiber. And the amount of carbs on a dry matter basis, approximately 38%. So here we have all of these anti-nutrients and very high amounts of carbohydrates. And when you have high amounts of carbohydrates, that's going to lower the amount of meat-based protein in the product. So just like Dr. Karen Becker said, it's no surprise that animals are developing dilated cardiomyopathy with these grain-free foods. It isn't the fact that it's grain-free. It's the fact that it's high in carb, low in meat-based protein, which provides amino acids that directly affect heart health. And it, it also includes these anti-nutrients like peas, legumes, lentils, chickpeas that directly prevent the absorption of taurine, which again, benefits the heart. Now, raw is the most ideal diet because it's high in meat-based protein. There's no carbs or starchy ingredients. There's no anti-nutrients. And I'll put my raw food playlist in the description below. It's specifically for beginners. It includes everything that you need to know to feed your cat raw safely. Now, you might be saying, Jess, I want to feed raw, but I don't have the money or I can't afford it. But I want to let you know that you, you can feed raw without going broke. And the easiest way to do this is to use a raw cat food premix. And this is very helpful for beginners too. So the first one I'll talk about is called Alnutrin. This is the one that I started with Jericho on when I started with my homemade raw cat food journey back in 2019. So if you use their premix that includes calcium, then you would need to add boneless meat and fresh liver. They have individual pre-packaged servings. So you open one packet, pour it into water, and then mix it with the meat and the fresh liver. You would be spending $1.94 per day. And I did this math based on what the average cost of ground beef is. And I took into consideration the recent increase in prices as well. So I looked online, Google told me that the average is about $4.26 per pound. But obviously, wherever you live, it might be different. So just do the math. And, and I'm sure you'll be inspired to see that raw is actually cheaper than commercial wet canned food. So let's take a look at a commercial wet canned food. This one is Friskies and the product name is With Chicken. With Chicken means that there's less than 25% chicken. If there was at least 25% chicken, it would be called chicken recipe, chicken dinner, chicken platter, chicken entree, something like that, instead of with chicken. This is part of AFCO guidelines, which are super important to understand. 
I'll put a link to my playlist in the description below so you can learn how to read Kafka labels. But let's take a look at the ingredients. We have a lot of yucky ingredients like liver. Where did the liver come from? Yes, liver is necessary, but is it beef? Is it pork? Is it rabbit? Is it lamb? What type of, what, what type of liver is it? Then we have meat byproducts. What type of meat? Do you not know? Like, again, is it chicken? Is it lamb? Is it turkey? Is it fish? What kind of byproducts? Is it the liver? Is it the feet? Is it the hooves? Is it the hair? Is it the blood? Is it the udders? Like, you don't know. How can I feel comfortable feeding this to my cat? Then we have wheat gluten, cornstarch, soy flour, and the list goes on, plus approximately 25% carbs on a dry matter basis. So for this can, it says to feed about 10 ounces per day for a 10 pound cat. So we have with raw, you're feeding about four ounces per day. With this wet food, it's about 10 ounces per day. And that honestly makes sense because there's not a lot of meat-based protein in it, and that's nutrition that cats need. So you need to feed way more of it, more than double compared to raw, so that it's actually nutritious, so that your cat actually gets nutrition that he needs. But remember, it's full of carbs, so the more you feed, the hungrier your cat's going to be, the more malnourished your cat's going to be, and your cat is likely to gain weight because carbohydrates get stored in the body as fat. So if you were to feed friskies every day, it would be about $1.46 per day. So you're saving about $0.48 cents every day, which would equal about $175 bucks per year. Now, I understand and I completely respect that every penny counts. I get it. I, I completely understand. But I would like to invite you to think about short-term savings versus long-term savings. So yes, you're saving money now buying a lower cost food, but if your cat gains weight, he's more likely to develop health issues and your cat's not getting the nutrition that he needs since it's lower in meat-based protein. So this is going to increase the risk of illness, which means more frequent vet visits, which means stress for you and your cat, which could mean potential medications, again, more stress for you and your cat, and this medication and lots of stress and low quality food in the long run could shorten your cat's life. I mean, obesity alone brings on the risk of a shortened life. So in the long run, you're really not saving much. And But with raw, you're maybe you're putting a little more up front, but you're investing in your cat's health for the future. The next raw cat food premise we'll look at is called TC Feline. My mom actually just started using this one for her four cats. TC Feline has two different formulas, so one that already includes liver and then one that does not include liver, so you would add your own liver source. So for the one that does include liver, you would only add boneless meat and water. So based on four ounces of food fed per day, you would spend about $1.56 per day. So it is cheaper than Alnutrin. It's still only 10 cents more than Friskies. There's another raw food premix for cats called No Better for Cats. And the 24 ounce pouch makes about 30 pounds of food. So for this one, if you're feeding four ounces per day, then you would be spending about $1.25 per day. So 21 cents cheaper than Friskies. Oh, <laughs> there's your solution. And I have a full guide on homemade cat food. I will put that in the description below. Now, what if I have a cat with special needs and I still want to feed homemade raw cat food? There are homemade raw cat food recipes created by veterinarians for special needs. We're going to take a look at CKD heart support, hyperthyroidism, and I'll talk about urinary crystals as well. And I'll link all these recipes and all the supplements that you need in the description. So the first one we'll talk about is CKD, and these homemade recipes are by Dr. Judy Morgan. She includes two recipes in this pamphlet. So on her website, you'll just hit add to cart. It's completely free, but you still need to provide your details and email so that she can send the recipes to you. The first recipe is cod-based, and I'm guessing she uses this because cod is high in protein and low in phosphorus. The other recipe is chicken-based with some salmon, and she uses eggshell calcium in both. She does use a lot of vegetables in both, and yes, they aren't necessary. Cats are carnivores, but at the same time, at least it's fresh food that you pick at the grocery store, 
and you have more control over the quality and how it's made. So this is still a big step up from commercial canned food or a massive step up from commercial dry food, especially for a cat that has kidney issues. And one of the recipes requires the RX Vitamins Feline Essentials Supplement. Dr. Judy Morgan also has a recipe for heart support. And this recipe includes beef, a bit of salmon, plus the veggies, the same supplements that I just mentioned before. And then Dr. Karen Becker has a iodine deficient hyperthyroidism recipe. Her mom made a batch for this for her cat, and then she posted the recipe on Facebook and Instagram. So she uses rabbit, including the heart, liver, and kidney. And she says that she buys from Hair Today. I started with Hair Today back in 2019 and used them up until about earlier this year. The only reason that I stopped buying from Hair Today is because I'm now getting Jericho's meat from the farmer's market. I get the meat, bones, and organs there because I buy my stuff at the farmer's market. So now I'm getting Jericho's stuff from the farmer's market. Hair Today is still really great because they also source from local farms and it's the same quality that you and I would buy. I would note that the rabbit sells out very quickly on Hair Today. So definitely sign up for their restock notifications by email. That's the only email that they'll send you when you sign up for that. They'll let you know when it's back in stock. And I would suggest to hop on that as soon as possible because rabbit does sell out very quickly from them. Dr. Becker also uses a bunch of eggs and some other supplements in the hyperthyroidism recipe. Now you might be wondering what about urinary crystals? Jericho actually had urinary crystals and I got rid of them at home without a prescription. I'll put a link to that video in the description below. Now diet is very important, but let's take a step back, take a breather, take a break and talk about other essentials that cats need to be happy indoors. So when we're thinking about cat essentials to keep our cats happy, we have to think about their wild side. Cats live indoors with us, yes, but they are not as domesticated as dogs are. For example, with dogs, we've bred them to work for us, basically complete tasks for us. So they're way more domesticated and have been in our lives way longer than cats have. The only reason cats are pets is because they eat rodents and we like free pest control. So when we think about how to make our cat happy indoors, think about their wild side. They like to catch and kill prey, so they have a lot of hunting mental stimulation and exercise from that. They like to climb, they like to scratch, they like to run around, and they like to hide and feel safe. So we have to move these traits indoors. And the first thing that we'll talk about is scratching. And all cats scratch is a natural instinct and it's really great for them. It's a natural stress reliever. They do it to mark their territory. They do it to shed dead layers of their claws. And they also do it when they're excited. So it's a really, really great thing when your cat scratches. And Jericho just recently got a new scratcher called Perfect Post. This is made by a veterinarian that's actually trying to prevent the declawing of cats. Please don't declaw your cat. It's a very horrendous procedure. Scratching is a natural thing that we should encourage our cats to do. And Jericho loves his scratcher. He also has a carpet scratcher in this room. And he also has a cat ladder, which has carpet, scratch-friendly carpet on each step. And that brings me to the next cat essential, which is very tall, climbable cat condos or trees. So the cat ladder is very large. It's very tall. It has six steps. So Jericho can run up and down. And cats really like to be up high because then they can survey their territory. Yes, your home is your cat's territory. It doesn't belong to you. It's his territory. And they like to do this because they like to survey their territory from up high. That way they can cover a lot of distance. They do this outside so that they can protect themselves and feel safe. So they want to do that inside as well. As an added bonus, you can put the condo or the tree next to the window. This provides endless entertainment. Even if your view stinks, cats love looking outside. Actually, when I was a cat sitter, one of the cats was sitting in the window looking outside and the view was literally the building across the alleyway. So it wasn't like pretty trees and a park. It was another building. And across the, across the way, another cat was sitting in the window looking out. So there's always something to look at. Other cats, birds, leaves, bugs. There's always something to look at outside and that will provide endless entertainment to your cat. By the way, I'll put all links to all of Jericho's supplies in the description below. And that brings me to the next cat essential, which I love is called the window perch. And I really like this because it doesn't take up a lot of floor space. So this is really great for small spaces. The cat ladder also, it only takes about 
like two feet of floor space. So it's really great. So the window perch that we have has two metal legs that stick to the window perch and up against the wall and then hook loop fastening strip that goes on the window sill and holds the window perch in place. And I like this because you don't need any power tools. You don't have to make any holes, it literally just sticks on the window sill. And I put it over the condo for added support. It also comes with memory foam and a removable washable cover, which is great. Next cat essential that your cat will love is his own cat beds. Even if your cat cuddles in bed with you every night, Jericho cuddles with me every time I lay down. He loves sleeping with me in bed. But having cat private cat beds is super important because it can provide a nice hiding spot and it can provide a comfy area for him to nestle up and, and you know, hold in that warmth maybe while you're at work or out with people. And maybe if your friends come over and they need a place to go and hide and be comfy until they're comfortable with the situation, the bed will provide that for you. And I like this bed, well, provide that for your cat. I like this bed because it folds down so Jericho can lay like this. It also folds up so it's kind of like an enclosed area. In the morning, he likes to lay like this. And in the afternoon, he he goes in inside and kind of bumps it up himself if I'm not around. The next cat essential that is super important and unfortunately overlooked is the litter box. Cats are very clean creatures. Just think of how many times a day your cat cleans himself and they prefer and deserve a clean bathroom just like all of us. You know, cats don't want to walk around on pee pee and poopy litter. And a clean litter box can help prevent stress help prevent behavior issues and can also help prevent health issues because if you think about it if the cat isn't comfortable using the box he's going to find somewhere else to go and this is stressful and it can cause behavior issues for your cat because he's stressed and it can cause health issues because maybe he doesn't feel comfortable going into the litter box or outside the litter box because cats don't want to soil their environment they're very clean creatures again so what i do is scoop after jericho goes every single time he goes that way, when he enters the litter box, it's always clean. And I also clean it out completely once a week. I spend about five minutes a week doing this, and I'll put that video in the description below. The next cat essential is cat toys, my favorite. I love playing with cats. When I worked as a cat sitter, so many people, so many clients would say, my cat doesn't play with me like that. Oh my gosh. Really, all you need is the right toys, a lot of creativity, and patience. The indoor version of hunting is playing, so we have to apply that logic when we play with our cats. Jericho's favorite toys are the Ripple Rug, which is more of an activity mat. It's very large, and it serves multiple purposes. He can scratch, rest on it, he can hide inside the ripples, and he can play with it. So I hide toys and treats inside the ripples, which is extra mental stimulation, encourage that hunting behavior. I also tease toys around it so that he can kind of study it like he would study prey, you know, figure out the best time to pounce, pounce, and then catch and kill. That's how you complete the hunting experience. He also loves the kitty whip wand, which is completely upcycled. It's made of wood and cotton. So I use that with just the whip itself. Jericho loves chasing it and catching it. It kind of looks like a mouse tail, so it makes sense. And when I want to switch it up, I'll tie a toy around it. We use wool balls and fur stuff and, you know, a lot of natural materials because they're safer and cats are also naturally attracted to them. Jericho loves rabbit fur toys. They're so soft and he really loves to bunny kick them. <laughs> now I hear you saying my cat isn't interested in playing and I have an entire video that covers how I get Jericho to play with me every single day. I'll put that in the description below. Thank you so much for listening and watching. I really appreciate you being here and your desire to make your cat help, happy and healthy at home. If you're watching on YouTube, let me know in the comments which topics I should cover next. And if you can review, I would love to hear your feedback and it would also be helpful to other cat parents that need to find this valuable information. Thanks again and I hope you and your cats have a wonderful day.